Hey guys, this is Steve with Eleven, and today I want to show you some of the items that I have in my studio and wanted to talk about the specification, the tech specs of these items, and why I purchased them and how they're working out for me. And one of the things I purchased recently was a Mac Mini uh, with the M1 or silicon chip, and it's a new chip. They're getting away from Intel and doing, I believe it's ARM. Um, so this is a new offering from Mac, and I'm a little ahead of the curve here. These uh, minis are pretty new with the M M1 chip, so the issue is that uh, your DAW, which is a custom to Intel chip, this is a different architecture. So if you're running Ableton or Reason or Reaper or any of your VSTs, the underlying architecture has changed, and your DAW is likely not compatible yet. So it'll be some time before it's truly compatible with M1, if at all in some cases. But what it does is if it's not compatible, it sort of defaults to Rosetta, which is this layer in between uh, on the, in Mac world uh, to basically sort of emulate an Intel architecture from what I understand. So it's not that your components will necessarily fail, it's that they will not be working in native M1 mode. So this is the Mac Mini and I was considering buying a MacBook Pro, but I didn't because I was gonna I could see from looking at these specs that I was getting more power from the Mini. And uh, what I've lost is portability. However I could take the Mini with me, but I'd have to hook it to a display of course. So the trade-off was do I want portability? Or do I want uh, more processing in a, in a cheaper machine? The new MacBook Pro spec'd out to the way I wanted it, um, which was basically 16 gigs of RAM and uh, I think it was 8 cores and maybe 512 or even 1 terabyte of SSD um, is $3,300 versus a mini. And the one I got is uh, 8 cores CPU, 8 cores GPU. And by the way, the MacBook Pro, that $3,300, had a, had a better graphics card than the built-in or the default, but it still wasn't as powerful as what I would have gotten from, or what I did get from the Mini. So uh, there's an 8 GPU core in uh, the M1 chip, and that's what I bought. Um, so I get 8 cores of GPU and 8 cores of CPU, and then this neural engine. I'm not really sure what that is, but... I wanted the A-Core GPU because of the Final Cut Pro work that I do. I was using Final Cut Pro on my MacBook Pro and I still am, but what I'm finding is that it's slower and the fan kicks on incessantly. So even when I'm recording, the, the fan will kick on, uh, which will interrupt um, my recording. And then when I'm rendering, uh, the fan runs high and it's just slower overall. So I'm getting more power out of this Mini. So. What I did here, um, I'll just sort of mock by another one, but um, I selected the uh, M1 chip with 8-core CPU, 8-core GPU, and 512 storage. And once you put that in your cart, then you can select the monitor. And this monitor I chose, I'm, I'm really happy with so far. Uh, so you can choose the memory. I think I might have added mine to 16. I can't remember for sure. Um, I already have Final Cut Pro, so I'm didn't buy that uh, but if you add this to the bag down here um, it should prompt me for the monitor here shortly let's see if it does yeah so here are some of the options that you can purchase with it and I have the magic keyboard with numeric keypad I really like that and I have the magic track trackpad um, I kind of like it but I'm thinking I might like the magic mouse better um, so I might sell that trackpad or just keep it and get a mouse instead. Um, and then I have these adapters. So you've got to watch out for USB-C to USB um, because you're going to have compatibility issues there. But here's the monitor that I bought, this LG Ultrafine 4K. And originally I thought, well, I don't really want to spend $700 on a monitor. Um, but then I started thinking for Final Cut Pro and what I want to do with it, I do want a very nice display and this obviously isn't as nice as it gets um, I think we're up to 8k now but reasonable price $700 for a 4k display and I really like it so far 
Um, the built-in speakers on it are actually quite good. I will say the M1 built-in speakers are terrible, um, stunningly terrible. Um, but the ones on this monitor are quite good. So, um, and there's a bunch of USB-C ports on the back, um, 4K video. Uh, overall, it's just easier on my eyes using this video, this uh, display. It's not huge. I was used to using a large display of lesser quality, so this is a smaller display of better quality, and I prefer that. So um, that's what I have, the LG Ultrafine 4K display with the Mac Mini with the 8-core CPU, 8-core GPU, and it's been a great machine so far, other than the compatibility issues with M1, but I suspect in time it'll get better. Um, the other things I purchased recently was this Rode video mic, um, this camera mount shotgun mic. So it's a shotgun mic. If you know anything about mics, the pickup is different than what you might expect from like a SM58 or something. But And it could be camera mounted, um, but what I was using was I'm hooking it directly to my iPhone or directly to my laptop, my MacBook Pro via USB-C. It's a $250 mic and it has this little shock mount that comes with it. You can see the um, uh, analog cable for plugging into older phones that have that port. Um, and over here on the side panel, I really like the roll-off functions at the top. So you can see 75 roll-off, 150 roll-off. Um, so there's no need to be capturing the, uh, the frequencies below 75 uh, hertz in most cases, or even 150. So I, I usually have that set to 150. And in the middle, this dual channel is also really nice. You can see the one on the left is higher than the one on the right. And what that essentially means is when you're recording, you get two channels simultaneous in case you clip on the louder channel. So if you're recording and you clip on the louder channel, you've got the lesser channel or the lower channel to repair from, which is, which is a lifesaver in, in a lot of situations. Um, so, <clears throat> and yeah, key features, vloggers use this, run and guns use it, voiceover podcaster. I, looking back on this, I don't think I would buy this mic again. It's a nice mic. It's uh, omnidirectional, if I recall correctly. Um, I do like the dual channel and then the roll-off, but the Omni, I'm not... Uh, so I'm getting, in my built-in iPhone 10, I think I have the XS Max, the microphone in there is fine, uh, even at a distance. Um, and same with my MacBook Pro built-in mic, which is what I'm using to record this right now, it's good enough. This is a little bit better, but I'm not sure it's $250 better. But I do like that it mounts to my tripod. Um, I also have the windshield for this right down here, $40. And then um, I bought this tripod that goes with it. It's $100, kind of expensive, but but um, carbon fiber, really great quality. Oben makes really good stuff. Um, maximum height is about a foot and a half. Um, and can hold 11 pounds of equipment. And this is it, uh, elongated. And uh, you can actually put this middle piece in there, um, which I have to extend it. Um, and it folds down really nice. And that stick on the right could be used as a selfie stick if you do that. Um, really nice and well worth $100. Don't go cheap on the tripods. You're going to regret it. Um, spend good money. You'll notice this is the standard screw on the top of this, and this over here is like a pan um, knob, and then this is your rotation. This is a ball and socket joint in the middle, so you loosen this on the side and then move it around. Um, so that's my carbon fiber tripod, $100, really happy with it. And then this is the Ulanzi foldable, foldable tripod mount that was about $30. So this part down here screws onto this right here. And then this is uh, adjustable for my iPhone to go in there. And so I just kind of open it up, set my iPhone in there and it squeezes shut and I can fold it down. Um, here's a view of it folded down. This is what it looks like mounted. So you can put it vertically or horizontally. I do both. Um, and the quick release plate, yeah, so you can screw the, um, this is the, this is what loosens the plate, and then you just pull it right out. Um, and there it is with the box. So I really like that, um, worth the $30 there too. And B&H was really helpful um, 
getting this for me because when I bought this I didn't even know what to get or what I was looking for and they helped me and I'm really happy with that purchase and then finally Reaper so if you're looking um, like it says right here the purchase price cost not so much it truly is if we click on that uh, $60 for a discounted license unlimited use um, and unlimited use of the features within it and then $225 for a commercial license is really just a great price because Reaper is fully featured well supported and um, is just a great program you can get started with this for free so you just download it the 64-bit version um, on your machine install it and you have a fully featured DAW um, ready to go and you know audacity is great too but um, Reaper has much more functionality I use it uh, quite often and I'm really happy with it so anyway just wanted to talk through uh, some of the things I have we talked about the Mac mini that I have along with this LG display well worth the money um, this mic uh, from Rode Rode makes good mics but I'm not sure that I would buy this again I don't think it's worth 250 um, but it's probably my use case that's driving that more than anything great tripod here carbon fiber well worth the hundred dollars the tripod mount, well worth the $30, and then Reaper. So um, hopefully this will give you some ideas if you're building out your studio, if you're considering any upgrades. Um, this would be uh, hopefully helpful to you as you build that out. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to any of us at 11, and we'd be happy to help you. Thanks for watching.